What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Now hopefully that last video on acceleration helped you guys understand how I ride a bit. Now let's talk about how others ride and maybe explore some of their methods on riding an electric unicycle. You know, when you purchase a motorcycle or a bike or a car or any other mode of transportation, there's usually some type of formal training to go by and so most people build some self-confidence within a short period of time. Add to that, there are guidelines to follow, for example, before you purchase a car, you must go to some driving school or take some tests to uh, attain a license of some sort in order to qualify you as a driver, or at least someone who will adhere to the rules of the road. You know, today if you own an electric unicycle, I say welcome to this brave and exciting new mode of transportation. However, unlike other modes of transportation, we unfortunately don't have guidelines or rules to give us an idea of what to expect at say 10 miles, 30 miles, or even 40 miles an hour. We have no formal lessons on how to avoid someone who suddenly gets in our way. But what we do have is each other to rely on in forums and the countless YouTubers with one to thousands of subscribers in order to gain some idea on how to ride an electric unicycle. So shout out to all the electric unicycle riders out there who have YouTube channels. So in this video, we will take a look at some riders who we know and have probably never seen and take a closer look at some of their riding methods. I've come up with a few uh, riding uh, styles. Um, for example, one is called Drunken Master, Crouching Tiger, Straight Man, The Grasshopper, which is me, Stiff Legs, and Explorer. Now each individual style can be static or dynamic. So you can have a Drunken Master style who's very dynamic, but it's really difficult to find someone who's a Drunken Master style who's static. But it's easy to find a straight man or someone with a stiff leg who is very static and not so dynamic. So in this video, we're pretty much going to explore different riders, but in another video in the future, it'll be much shorter where I'll focus primarily on each individual style with a description. Okay, so let's get it going. So we're taking a look at this guy. I chose him completely by random. He's riding a 9-bot Z10. Sorry for the quality. I'm not sure why the quality is so bad. I selected HD and it's still horrible. Anyway, point is, he's riding a Z10 in the backyard road areas. I don't know. But it looks like pretty rough terrain and he's very comfortable riding flat-footed. So he's a flat-footed rider. But the awesome thing about him is he has his knees bent and he has his protection gear. As you can see, he has his knee pads. Um, yeah, let's play this. So as you can see, he's riding off of some pretty rough terrain and uh, he looks to be very comfortable. If I look carefully, I can see that his, um, his feet is pretty much toward the back part of the pedal. And if you can see, his front foot is overhanging by a lot. To me, that's not a good way to ride, but everyone has a different riding style. I respect everybody's riding style. I'm just mentioning it based on my... I'm, I'm being very subjective here, okay? So um, what I like about him is he has his feet um, his legs bent okay so his knees aren't straight it's bent so in case he encounters any type of like bumps or roots um, or anything like that he's ready you know also he se also he seems to be riding at a very fast pace in this back road area the z10's wide tire uh, pretty much allows for that of course if you had like so if, if you had something like the in motion v10 or v10f or even a king song i mean these things have pretty thin tires compared to the z10 but the cool thing about them is there's the tires are pretty big you know there's a wide diameter or circumference i should say and so yeah they should be able to go through this no problem i don't see how the z10 uh, offers a major advantage compared to these other wheels but his riding style is pretty on point. I just don't like the fact that his feet are all the way to the back part uh, of the pedal and his front toes are overhanged so much. 
because if he hits like a big bump, it's there's really very little he could do unless he bends his knees a little more. He looks like a very heavy set guy, so that also adds to his stability. If you're pretty light, I could see how because it's tubeless. The Z10 is tubeless, so if you hit something, depending on what um, PSI you have, this thing will act like a catapult. You know what I mean? You hit something hard, it's just gonna throw you off. But he's pretty heavy. He's riding pretty fast. He seems like he knows the road, so. Let me just go forward a little. I want to see something. Okay, I want to see how he dismounts. Now, the cool thing about any riding style, you can see how well someone is um, in terms of a rider by how they mount and dismount. So this guy looks very comfortable to me. Okay, let's see how he dismounts. Yeah, yeah, wow, wow, he's he's very confident. The way he got off of that wheel and just spun it around, I mean, you can see there's really little shaking going on. There's really little thought to what he was doing. He just, it, it came like a reaction. It was just a normal reaction for him to get off and just turn around, you know what I mean? Uh, he's definitely not a new rider, but he's definitely someone who's been going on these trails, riding these trails for a little while, and he's very used to it, he's very used to his wheel. Yeah, this guy's a very good intermediate, it seems. Now, I saw a little turning here and there, but uh, it seems like he uses his torso to turn. Not like me, and some other people, some other aggressive riders they use their uh, heel toe, you know what I mean? Kind of like in racing, but anyway, um, they use their heel and toe to pretty much throw the wheel off balance. Now the Z10, you can't really do that. The Z10 is, is a wheel that no matter what you try to do to it, it'll always try to stay up upright. In many ways, that's a really good thing for new riders because what happens is this wheel, no matter what, will try to stay up, uh, up you know what I mean, up straight. Unlike other wheels, they allow you complete freedom to wobble it, turn it left, throw it right. In my experience riding the Z10 for the short time that I did, this thing just wants to stay up. If you look at another rider, for example, Robert Ace, you'll see you'll have to literally throw your entire body to the left, throw your body entirely to the right if you really want to be able to experience the Z10 at a high speed, like 30 miles per hour, etc. But anything below 25 miles per hour, I think 15 to 25 miles per hour, you still kind of have to do that if you want to make sharp turns, like throw your body to the, to the, to, in the, in the direction that you plan on going. But you can't really turn it heel toe wise like you would any other wheel. I'm not sure if that's because of some software firmware thing. I think, in my opinion, it has to do with how the wheel itself is designed, like the tire. Um, but that was my experience. Alright, so next up is EVX. If you don't know about EVX, check out his channel. He gives very informative reviews on electric wheels. And my thing about his channel is I absolutely love his editing skills. So definitely check him out. Now, with him, I've had the chance to ride with him for a little bit in New York. And he's a, I would consider him an intermediate aggressive rider. Um, okay, so what happens is I notice he rides flat-footed like everyone else um, that's pretty much not on the advanced side of aggressing of, of, of aggressive riding because I haven't really met many people who ride extremely aggressive flat-footed for the most part so let's take a look at his riding style first off we see his heels are in the back pedal it's very flat his knees are bent that's awesome plus also, what we're seeing is he's using his torso to uh, pretty much sway the wheel left and right. Now, that could just be because he's going at a low speed right now. Maybe at higher speeds, he may use his heel or his toes, I'm not sure. But for now, we can see that he's using his torso to sway the wheel left and right. Now, people, some people did say that the Kingsong 16X has that um, tendency to force you to throw it left and right similar to the z10 because of its fat tire i did have a chance to ride the z the uh, z10 and the kingsong 16x and i didn't experience that much of a 
resistance in terms of throwing it left and right or being able to turn it left and right compared to the Z10. I actually found it to be a really nice wheel. It felt like a gotway to be honest. Okay, so here he is riding the Nicola Plus. And as you can see, he's, he's very flat footed. And he is using, if you look over here, you can see that one of his knees is a little bit forward than the other. That could be a camera effect, I'm not sure, but it doesn't seem like that to me. But he is using his torso, for the most part, to uh, turn left and right. Now, if an emergency happens, like let's say a car just suddenly comes in his way, I don't think he'll have the reaction time to pretty much swerve from the car into safety as fast as he would like to. But that's fine, because I think, in my opinion, he compensates for that by looking ahead. You know what I mean? He knows the city streets. His, this is his neighborhood. This is his background. This is his backyard. So he knows what to expect for the most part. You know what I mean? So his riding style is not entirely based on an aggressive posture per se, um, because he pretty much knows what to expect. Because I don't see how someone who rides like this can avoid uh, you know, a, a car that just randomly decides to turn left or turn right without, you know, like some people, they turn left without thinking with before turning on their signals or whatever. Um, in a situation like that, I would assume that he would brake instead of trying to swerve left or right. He would attempt to do an emergency brake. Um, in my case, if something like that happened, yes, I'd try to brake too, but because I'm aware of the style I have, I may swerve to the left or may swerve to the right while braking, I don't know. But I'm more likely to get away from the car instead of braking. Because again, I don't know what's back there. My focus is on what's ahead of me, right? So let's just look at him ride. So he's very flat-footed, very flat-footed. I like the carving. The carving is amazing because you should be able to throw your wheel wherever you want. Like, your wheel should not be the one controlling you. If you're flat-footed, heel-toe person, whatever, it doesn't matter. The point is you should be able to comfortably throw your wheel around wherever you want, whenever you want, however you want. You know what I mean? Because if you're going to ride in traffic, one style is not enough. You need at least one style that you can um, use most of the time and another style that you can use to transition into in case of an emergency, etc. You know what I mean? Because traffic is unpredictable, but at the same time, riding in traffic is actually safer than, for example, riding in a, in a bike lane, for example, right? So, yeah, he's, he's he, I consider him an intermediate aggressive rider because he's very, he's more on the careful side, which is good. He's, I recommend being careful. I mean, why wouldn't I recommend that? Do not be... Um, aggressive and irresponsible at the same time, right? Why would you want to do that? But yeah, so I think most people that I've seen ride like him. Yeah, so no matter where I go, it seems like he he uses the same style. Now, when he's going straight, this is a bike lane. When he's uh, accelerating, it seems like, again, he's flat-footed and he's a leaner. He's one of the types of riders that lean in order to gain acceleration. Now, one thing I should say about such riders is uh, if you're weighing over 200 pounds, if you weigh over 200 pounds, then I recommend getting 100 volt. Because if you lean and that's your main uh, way of gaining acceleration, then you need as much power as you can possibly get out of the wheel. Because one of the commenters told me the purpose of having 100 volt or whatever um, is not necessarily for speed. Okay, it does help, of course, but the main purpose of these designations, 84 volt, 100 volt, and soon hopefully 126 volt, is basically the ability of the wheel to keep you upright. So if you're leaning forward at 200 miles per hour, that's fine if you're just gaining little acceleration, but let's say you're really trying to get off the line and trying to beat someone or whatever, or some car or whatever. Well, that 200 pound weight is at some point going to uh, overpower the wheel, allowing, you know, pretty much causing for a cutout. But if you have, if, you, if you're over 200 pounds and you have a 100 volt, which is right now the most powerful wheel 
any 100 volt is powerful, right? Then you have more power than needed for your over 200 pounds in order to lean forward. I don't ever recommend leaning forward, but if you're under 160, under, under 170, etc., basically under 200 pounds, well, let's just say under like 180 below, then you're good. You know, you can lean. But I just don't like leaning. I just don't like it because roads are not perfect, okay? In an ideal world, leaning would be beautiful, but there's so many things you could encounter and leaning just does not allow you or give you the amount of time needed to recover in case you encounter a bump, a pothole, um, a speed bump, anything, emergency. It's just, it's just not an ideal way to gain acceleration while being an aggressive rider. Some people do it really well though. I'll show you an example. Yeah, so what I'm noticing is uh, when he's braking, again, he's literally braking with both feet while leaning backwards. Okay, what I do is uh, I pretty much brake with one leg. You know what I mean? And what that, what that helps me do is gain, regain acceleration at a quicker pace than relying on my whole body to come back in that forward leaning position to gain acceleration, you know? But again, like I said, everyone has their own style and he has adapted his style to match his needs. You know, I could never ride like him, but I'm sure if I learn how to ride like him, I would adapt as well. So there's no right or wrong way to ride, except to say over leaning is just not a good idea. I really like this. This is nice. This is beautiful. You see? So when you're comfortable with your style, you make it look effortless, right? And that was beautiful. Let's go see that again. That that was that was beautiful. <laughs> yeah, that was that was good. That was very beautiful. There was no stress. There was no, he looked on the side once to see if a car was coming, and that was it. I mean, he pretty much judged his entire environment already. And the wheel, since that's 100 volt, the guy knows exactly how much power he has beneath his, beneath his feet, and he's able to push it, right? So this is what you need. You need, to be, you need to be aware of your wheel, aware of your environment, and pretty much be very comfortable with your style. Next. Now, this guy hosted on EVX. Once again, check out his channel, EVX. Um, he's amazing, actually. Uh, this guy has, I don't know his history. I don't know how many wheels he's had, etc. But I know one thing, he loves to ride. And not only that, he loves New York. And riding to him, based on what I've seen, seems to be a play, seems to be a play thing. Um, meaning he's very aware of his environment. Once again, guys, the most important thing about adapting your style to your environment is knowing your environment. Right now, I feel very comfortable in Boston, but if I, when I go to New York, I always feel a little uneasy, but I always feel better once I'm there. You know what I mean? But you have to know your environment. That's gonna give you enough confidence to throw your wheel. Now, this guy is an amazing writer. He, he really is. Um, let's see what he's riding. He's riding an MSX 100 volt, and he has a 2200 watt hour battery uh, on his amazing beast. Now, as you can see, if you look closely, does he look comfortable to you? Does V look comfortable to you? Yes, he looks very comfortable. Uh, he has power pads, as you can see right here. Now, power pads, usually, in my opinion, from what I've been researching on these things and I don't use them they pretty much offer the rider another level of um, comfort okay so a lot of people like to squeeze their wheels for various reasons number one is acceleration number two is the ability to climb big hills or steep hills and push the wheel forward uh, number three is for pretty much stunts like jumping on curves, etc., curbs, hopping curbs, etc., etc., whatever they say. But anyway, this guy loves to hug his wheel. I can tell because he has these things right here. I don't really hug my wheel because I don't hop curves, curbs. But uh, one day I wouldn't mind adding that 
to my riding style because there are times where roads are closed or traffic's too thick and hopping on that sidewalk would be a beautiful thing. But clearly, this guy loves to hug his wheel. Why? Maybe it gives him a level of comfort that not hugging the wheel gives. But anyway, let's look at him ride. Yeah, I'll ride and MSX one pretty much every day though. So pretty much, uh, I, I typically start my day around 11, 12 o'clock. Pretty much, once I get there, it's... it's Counter, uh, the biggest problem is just jaywalkers that come in between traffic. So if I'm doing... All right, so the first thing we can see, the first thing we can see, and the first thing we heard him say was jaywalkers, right? Now, that tells you a lot about him already, okay? Just by the way he mentioned jaywalkers already tells you something, okay? Because jaywalkers are going to happen. It's not, it's just a fact of life. People are going to jaywalk. We put, they put the signs there, the walk signs over there, but that doesn't mean everyone's gonna follow that. There are some people who are gonna literally run across the street on a red light, I'm sorry, on a green light. They're just gonna run across. You have to expect that. Now, in a car, you can plan for that. You know what I mean? Your car gives you a different level of comfort. You don't really feel you're going 40 miles an hour. You can stop at, you know, in an instant, no big deal. But on the wheel, everything is just logarithmic, right? You just feel everything. You feel the speed, you feel the anxiety, you feel the road, You feel, everything is in front of you. And so every decision that you make has to be made before the decision has to be made. Okay, at least your reaction has to be in your back pocket. You can't think of what I'm gonna do when that jaywalker is riding. You, you have to have something already prepared in your being from riding. So this guy has built enough, how do you say, he's built enough experience, he's built enough um, database he has a, a big database in his head about what to expect from new yorkers and so that gives him a different level of comfort from someone who's coming from colorado for example okay or colorado california in you know or arizona and and putting that person in the same conditions that he is right he has a completely different understanding of his environment this is why he rides the way he rides in my opinion so let's what 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 I see here is his body is leaning to the left, okay? His hand is out, okay? What does that tell you? He is extremely aggressive <laughs> because extremely aggressive riders do one of two things. Well, not one of two things. They do many things. But one of two things I've noticed about most aggressive riders is that they use their entire body. So when they're relaxed, for the most part, they don't really have to do anything, but when they're really freestyling and just riding what to you may look like mad, they use their entire body. And what that does is it gives them a level of control and comfort. Throwing your hands to the left, throwing your hands to the right, you throwing your hands to the back, using your hands, using your body, it just gives you that extra sense of of like right ability it makes you feel like I'm in control of everything right now okay there's no stiff part of the body okay so let's look at him right a little bit more and you're gonna see more of that you're gonna see him go left you're gonna see him more. And, and to be fair I've watched the video already so let's let's watch 20 with the car and all. you see that he's literally so chill he's very comfortable I'm telling you the guy has already assessed what this guy is possible uh, what his possible next move is. He's already assessed this car right here. He saw the light. Trust me, he's seen the light. <laughs> okay, it's the same as when we drive in, in our cities. We know our cities so well. Uh, most people go, not a lot of people, but in my city at least, um, the, the second car goes on the red light and then it becomes a red light. But anyway, he's already so done all this. Pop out. That's, That's like, like my, my number, number one, one right, right now. now. Uh, otherwise, otherwise, it's just the normal cars, cars cutting, cutting off other, other cars, cars and forcing other cars, cars towards me and pinching me. Oh, oh, oh. I love this. You see this? So basically, there, there are different riding styles. And at the end of this video, you'll see what riding style I designate him. But he is an aggressive rider. So his style I call the drunken master. And what that means is in drunken master style, okay, it's always moving left, moving right. But his arms, his hands, he's moving and he's trying to confuse you. What am I going to do next? What am I going to do next? Right? So his style is a drunken master, but also he's a very dynamic drunken master. He does He's not a static rider. Also, I consider him an explorer because an explorer riding style, what that does is, what that means is if you're, if you're an explorer riding style, uh, 
it means that you use different styles at different in different scenarios. So for example, when he's chilling, he's just riding, his foot sir, his foot is flat, but his body is going to the left, it's going to the right. He's throwing the wheel wherever he feels like it. His hands are flailing what seems to be, you know, flailing everywhere, but really he's just showing a different level of control. He's showing way more control than uh, a new rider or an intermediate rider would show. Now, if you notice, the bus is in front of him, right? And if you look at the lights of the bus, it's red. That means it's holding brakes. That bus is stopping. We can tell because it's red light up there and all the cars in front have stopped already. But look what he does. He doesn't freak out. He lifts his left heel. This is my style. But he uses my style for a different reason. It's not my style. I'm just, I'm just saying, like, that's what I use. But he's using this one for a different reason. He's using it to throw his wheel to the left. But at the same time, he's throwing his wheel to the left. He's gaining acceleration to move forward. Check this out. Let's go back a little so we can see the whole thing. The car's towards me and pitching me in tight spaces. Pretty much it. Half the battle. And then he goes back down. And then he goes back down to being flat footed. This is amazing. This is what I love. I love this type of riding because it shows that not only he knows his environment, but his wheel is, is, is like secondary nature. It's secondary nature. He doesn't have to say, what should I do in this moment? What should I do? No, it's already in his head. It's already in his being. It's already in his muscle memory. This is what I need to do. So all these cars to any average rider would cause someone to slow down and simply go through the traffic, looking left and right, and, and, and some anxiety would be there. But with him, there's zero anxiety. Well, if not zero, very minimal anxiety. You can tell because his hands are everywhere. This shows comfort. This shows control. This shows, listen, I know this environment. I know a car can hit me at any moment, but the thing is, I have maximum amount of awareness that I need in order to push this wheel. Um, so he knows his, the ability of his wheel. He knows what his wheel is capable of doing in order for him to literally do what we just saw him do. No traffic. He owns the city. The guy owns it. Why? This is where he is. This is where he lives. Now, for someone who's, who's watching in, in from Miami or Hawaii or the countryside, if you look, you look at this, you you're, you're, you're already have a, a prejudice about cities already. Oh, it's busy, too much traffic, too much people, etc., etc. That's fine. That's true. But if you live there, it's just another day to you. <laughs> you know, like, for example, if you, if you come into New York City with your car and someone grazes your car while jaywalking, while you're moving on a green light, to you, that's nuts. But to these people, it's normal because that's where they live. That's kind of ironic. It says touching, and he was touching the bus. That's pretty funny. But anyway, um, that's V. Um, I consider him a drunken master style. But I also say that he's very dynamic in his writing, and he's an explorer as well. Because he uses multiple styles depending on what the situation calls for. Yeah, V. You see, he does it again, right here. The reason why spot. I actually love riding, really, it's like one of the few things that will take you away from... Now, check this out. Let's go back. We, we almost missed this. Now, this is what I'm talking about. So, there are, this, is, this was beautiful. So, what happens is when you get really comfortable, you tend to forget... Because, and this happens to me too, when, when you get extremely comfortable riding, sometimes you forget you're in traffic. <laughs> but here's what he does. Now, I'm not sure if he meant to do this, but this was a very good example of what I meant by a, a car coming in front of you or stopping in front of you while you're riding and what you're going to do in an emergency situation, right? So if we notice here, his right foot, right heel is up. He's anticipating something because if you notice, he doesn't really use this unless he's about to turn sharply or cause some type of emergency, um, right? So. He's already anticipating something. We can tell because it's green light. He's moving forward. And look, the MSX light is red. Why? He's anticipating something. Check this out. One of the few things that... Boom. What does he do here? This was actually planned. So this was actually planned. Now, I see the yellow light here. I'm not sure if the car is going to turn left. And he noticed that. 
on the green light. You see what I'm saying? Either way, we know one thing. He anticipated that. And I can tell because look at his foot. It's no longer flat. And if you're flat footed, there's no way you're going to escape while accelerating at a high rate of speed at the same time. Unless you're an aggressive rider who is a dynamic explorer. Explorer is someone who has multiple riding styles and switches those up based on this situation. And that's clearly what V is doing here. And he gets away scot-free in a and beautiful we'll take way. You away from your <laughs> daily thoughts. I you love it. I love it. Remain 100% focused in doing this. And he said it himself, you have to remain 100% focused while doing this. Let's, let's listen to V. Love riding, really, it's like one of the few things that will take you away from your daily thoughts. You have to remain 100% focused in doing this. If you're thinking about anything else, if you're thinking about your bills that you owe or problems with your girlfriend or your wife, it's not going to result in a, a wealth for you in the streets because you're not 100% focused, you know what I mean? So when I do this, it, like, it frees me. I feel, I feel free. So I'm, I'm 100% just zoned in into what I'm doing. Exactly. And that's the best advice you can have is know your environment, always be focused and be zoned in. Know your environment. All right, next.